One, welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees meeting. It is November 7th, 2016. Uh, Mr. Burning, could we please have the roll call? Yes, Mr. Burning? Present. Ms. McFarland? Present. Mr. Honolong? Present. All the trustees are present. The uh, first thing that we have this evening uh, for our Pledge of Allegiance is we are uh, fortunate to have with us Cub Scout Pack 390. And I was wondering if the uh, Cub Scouts would want to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. On our agenda this evening, we have a special recognition for Dr. Kelly Knox, uh, who has been inducted in the Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame. And Gwen, I'd like to turn this over to you, if I could, Thank please. Thank you. Thank you. For all those in the audience that are here this evening and those that are watching, we are so honored. Uh, this is a great evening because there are lot, there's lots of celebrations within our township. And I had the fortunate opportunity to attend the Ohio induction uh, Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame induction, which one of our residents was uh, a recipient of that award. And her name is Kelly K. Knox, Dr. Knox. And she is a U.S. Army and Air Force veteran from Hamilton County, of course. Kelly Knox uh, has lived in Springfield Township and is a veteran of the U.S. Army and Air Force who served in Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and the Bosnian War. Kelly is a nationally recognized expert in the effective treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder and is active in educating the public and disseminating evidence-based treatment to mental health professionals throughout this great country. She served as commander of the Greater Cincinnati Women's Post 644 of the American Legion from 2009 to 2011. She has been on the advisory board of the Joseph Home for Homeless Veterans and Volunteers of America. She is a life member of the Disabled American Veterans, Paralyzed Veterans uh, of America, and the Military Officers Association of America. Uh, she has continued to use her emergency ex expertise and her skills as a mission pilot with the Civil Air Patrol. And as a disabled veteran, she is very active in promoting adaptive sports and to represent the National Paralyzed Veterans Racing Team in paracycling events, which you may see her at times paracycling and, and riding her bike throughout Springfield Township going up to Winton Woods. She enjoys that. Uh, she also is an active volunteer with the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, which named her as their bike MS Ambassador in 2010, and she has personally raised over $10,000 for MS Research and Direct Services. And so one of the things in order to be uh, recognized at the state and federal level, because it's not just a state recognition, but a federal level, they look at those veterans who have uh, continued to serve and serve the community and continue to share their gifts to improve the quality of life, not just for the veterans, but also for the community. So I'm just so honored. I'd like, Kelly, if you could step forward, please.
Thank you. Uh, community is very important to me, and I'm, I'm very, very proud to be a resident of Springfield Township. When I first got the, the notice, it said that I was a resident of Cincinnati. And I called up the governor's office right away, and I said, please correct that. I'm from Springfield Township. <laughs> Springfield Township has been very, very good to me. <clears throat> Almost three years ago, my house burned. And Chief Leininger and his people were incredibly supportive of me and my family in dealing with that, what could have been uh, really a much worse tragedy than it was. And the police department has been very, very supportive of me and my family working in mental health. I've had a situation in recent years that's been uh, concerning and a little bit volatile, and they've taken very, very good care of me. They also support uh, the Greater Cincinnati Women's Post 644. They keep our ceremonial weaponry in their armor, armory and allow us to check that out as necessary for when we need it. So as, as proud as I am to, to receive this recognition, I'm also very proud to be a resident of this township. And if there's anything that I can ever do to serve you, please let me know. Then we're going to continue standing here for a few minutes because I'd like to turn the uh, next recognition over to Rob Leininger, our FAR chief. Rob? Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'd like to recognize Dr. Hamilton Limpert. Uh, if you all please be seated. And before we start, um, I'd like Lieutenant Kevin Richards and paramedic firefighter Marilyn Gowen to come forward with the plaque that we're going to present to Dr. Limpert this evening. Uh, the board is going to present this plaque uh, in recognition of his 22 years of service uh, to the fire department in Springfield Township. A little history about Dr. Hamilton Limpert. Dr. Hamilton Limpert started providing medical direction for the Northern Hills Volunteer Fire Department in 1994. In 1996, he was selected to be the medical director for the Springfield Township Fire Department. Most of Dr. Limpert's time during the first several years was providing oversight as Springfield Township Fire Department's division of EMS quickly grew to be one of the busiest in Southwest Ohio. Under his medical direction, the fire department has accomplished or achieved the following responded to, to approximately 78,000 EMS details since September 1 of 1996. We have received six Academy of Medicine accreditations, two STEMI awards from the American Heart Association, six CE training site certifications from the Ohio Department of Public Safety, advanced cardiovascular care by implementing 12 lead EKGs in the field, advanced pharma pharmacology therapy uh, by also implementing state-of-the-art thera therapeutic drugs in the field, advanced pre-hospital stroke care by participating in TPA studies, advanced electronic patient care report writing and data collection, developed quality assurance standards for EMS, developed EMS training division to teach advanced EMS training curriculum, developed advanced airway management guidelines for EMS, and developed emergency medical responder curriculum for the Springfield Township police officers. Dr. Limpert's management of EMS operations was strict, but he allowed EMS personnel to try new innovations via pilot programs and studies. He established a standard of excellence that we strive to achieve today. His leadership and oversight will be missed but we are grateful for the 22 years of service as a medical director for the Springfield Township Fire Department. We wish Dr. Hamilton Limpert and his family good health and happiness in his retirement. And Dr. Limpert, if you would come forward, please. And his family is right here in the front row.
you. Okay, moving on with our agenda this evening, we have what? our audience left. <laughs> <laughs> moving on with our agenda this evening, we have approval of minutes from a meeting for our regular session on October 11th, 2016, and our regular work session on October 25th, 2016. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, uh, Mr. Burning, do we have a fiscal officer report? Yes, we do, Mr. Hanalal. Um, for the month ending 10-31-2016, the township expenditures were $1,862,670.08, and the receipts were $1,308,000. The ending cash balance of $20,428,166.85 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects, and investment. What I request is a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, updated and current revenues and reports for the period ending October 31st, 2016. Do I have that motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and I just want everyone to know that financial reports are available for viewing at the administration offices weekdays during regular business hours and on our website anytime you want to log on. And that's all I have, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next, moving on to uh, departmental action and discussion items. Mr. Henningkamp, do you have a uh, report? I do, Mr. Hunter Law, a number of action items, the first of which is to uh, request the board authorize and grant the uh, award the bid for our Kemper Mill resurfacing project. Uh, we had a bid opening um, a couple weeks ago, I guess, or what was that, was last, last week. week? Last week. And uh, received four bids for the project. As you can see, the bids were fairly tight uh, in price, but the low bid was R.A. Miller at $722,843. Uh, that is under the engineer's estimate of $855,090. Of and uh, we've used R.A. Miller uh, in the past. In fact, they just were the, uh, were the contractor that completed our most recent uh, project here in the, uh, in the Finneytown area. So with that, I would request authorization that the board uh, authorize us to complete all the necessary paperwork to, uh, to award that bid, contingent on final review by legal counsel uh, and myself. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the next item I have is to seek the board's authorization to uh, adopt our 2017 township park fees. Uh, we've had some, some discussion about this, I think, at two of our different work sessions uh, over the last two months. Uh, these fees were pr first proposed by uh, Mike Gould and, and Kim Flam. Uh, I think at that time the board talked about conducting a meeting with the uh, with the various athletic associations to get some feedback from those groups. Uh, they did that. I think all the feedback was generally very very positive. They liked the changes. Thought overall it would be better for the athletic associations in the township. So uh, with that in mind, we would uh, recommend adoption of the uh, park fees schedule as presented. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> and I know the, the feedback that I had heard on that was that they were actually supportive of this and particularly that we're going to handle some of the maintenance tasks that in the past they were they were required to do. So it's really kind of working out better, Mike, for everybody. Is that the idea? That's 110% correct. Yeah, they were having trouble getting volunteers to actually provide the maintenance that's needed before games and practices. So when we, when we were, we came to them with the idea of us taking on that task, they were very receptive. Good, that's great. Next item I have, uh, X2 items actually have to do with uh, our 
health insurance and life insurance programs. We'll start first with the health insurance uh, program. Uh, this time of the year we go through our, our renewal. Uh, at current, the renewal that we have submitted uh, represents roughly about a 14.5% increase from where we were last year. Uh, as has been our practice in each of the years when we when we get a, a uh, an increase like that we certainly look at ways in which we can reduce those costs and ways in which we can make plan change and uh, this year was no different uh, there is an option out there which is known as true cost uh, it still involves us being uh, self-insured so that part really doesn't change but some of the way the plan is structured um, for the most part, there's going to be some changes to the employees and the fact that uh, the program that we're recommending would not involve an HSA, which we currently have now, so it's not a high deductible health care plan. It would go back with, uh, with co-pays, uh, which we haven't had under the old system, but it's still self-insured. And we're still crunching final numbers and a few things to do. We just got the renewal actually uh, this afternoon, but as the board knows, we've talked about that issue uh, during our work session as well. And at that point, I would seek the board's authorization to enter into that agreement. Uh, we believe the numbers will, will be about flat from where we are today so that we'll be able to, uh, when all things are said and done, uh, our costs should be, you know, if anything, the same, maybe just slightly less uh, than where we are today. So, um, you know, with, with health costs rising and you look at, you know, what's happening across and what states are, are facing, if we can keep our keep our health care, uh, you know, flat. That's, that's a pretty, pretty big achievement. And rather than the renewal, which is about a 14 and a half percent increase, this is, uh, this is a diff, you know, this would be a savings from what that option uh, would be, but about flat compared to last year. So at this point, I'd seek a motion from the board to authorize me to enter into that agreement on behalf of the board, again, contingent on all the final details uh, that we're working out. As I said, we just did get the, the final quote uh, today. Um, so I, the numbers won't change, but there's just some of the details on the plan that we'll have to uh, have to complete. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second it. And I would just like to say I participated in, in those meetings, one of the meetings, and I found it uh, very uh, extraordinary. And I, and I also really like the fact that we'll continue to be able to provide quality, comprehensive health care to the individuals that we serve, the staff and everyone, and they'll be happy and, and also their health care needs in, in any instance will be covered. And I was very impressed with the whole philosophy around the true cost uh, part of that program. So uh, again, I think it's a, a, a continues to be a great way that we can continue to provide healthy choices and healthy benefits for our individuals we, we have working for us. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mike, I would on that just want to say thank you for, I know we go through this every year and we've over, you know, <clears throat> health care costs have been rising. I know Larry, you're back here in the back of the room and, and Larry's our HR director and has worked with this and, and you guys every year jump through all the hoops you can to try and find innovative ways to keep our health care expenses down. And at the same time, I got to say to the department heads, you know, we appreciate all the employees that that they're understanding. They, you know, you know, we've had changes. I can't tell you how many different places, you know, different programs we've had over the years. But everybody's pretty flexible and, and adapts with it. And they realize that we're trying to provide, uh, you know, good good coverage at the most affordable price. So it's. We appreciate the flexibility that the employees show and Mike, all the hard work that you do. I think it's, uh, we've done an outstanding job of keeping mm -hmm. medical costs, uh, you know, under control. If we had just sat back and just went along with the re with the renewals that we've gotten on some of these programs, we would pay, be paying way more than Absolutely. we are. Absolutely. So. Well, Joe, I appreciate those comments and you're right. I mean, it is a kind of a total Total team effort, and then it, it just works. I think yeah. we've spent a lot of time, and Larry's a, a lot of credit with the department heads of, of getting the information out to our employees and making sure that they understand what's out there. Uh, we do have a committee uh, that has representatives from all of the departments, and I think that's been really, really helpful. And just try to get the information, and you know, I think the employees do understand it, mm -hmm. and, and you know, they understand the cost. 
to provide some of the things that we do. And, and I think they certainly have been very, very appreciative of what the board has done and the flexibility of the board uh, over the years in, in trying to provide you know, an excellent benefit. But at the same time, realizing you know, we've got to keep the cost, uh, you know, got to keep the cost reasonable. I know I was here for one of the meetings that we had with the representatives um, from uh, Highland and um, mm -hmm. Benefit Custom Design, Custom Design Benefits, and um, it sounds like this true cost is maybe the way healthcare is going to go in this country mm -hmm. eventually. So, uh, yeah, I said it's really over the last five years taken off, taken off. Yeah, so if it if it's good, government will change it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Starts working. My guy Don't say can. that. Maybe we better not say anything. Yeah, that's true. Well, likewise, Joe, the, uh, the other item that we did take a look at is our life and accidental death and disability uh, insurance. And uh, we also saw a fairly big increase. Uh, currently, we're with Lincoln Financial. And we also sought, because of uh, some of the increases that they were submitting for this year, um, some other options, and we were able to secure a proposal from Standard Insurance, which for all intents and purposes is exactly the same. The coverages are the same. Uh, pretty much all of the conditions are the same. Uh, we were able to get a three-year uh, lock-in quote from Standard Insurance, which represents a 30.43% 30, uh, 30 decrease uh, in what we're currently paying. So that's win-win all around. We lock it in for three three years, so we know we're not going to get a rate increase over the next three years, and it's, like I said, a, roughly a third of what we're paying uh, currently. So I would, uh, with that, <coughs> seek a motion from the board to authorize me to enter into uh, the agreement with standard uh, insurance for our life and accidental death and disability. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And then the last action item I have for the board is just to seek the board's approval to establish the holiday closing uh, for the closings for the Senior Center and Community Arts Center uh, for the upcoming holidays. Uh, Thanksgiving would be from Monday, uh, November the 21st through Friday, November the 25th. The Senior Center would be closed. And then during the Christmas, New Year's holiday would be closed from Friday, December the 23rd uh, through Monday, January the 2nd. And I might as well also add in that the township administrative hours, uh, also our holiday hours, I might as well put those in there. We will be closed uh, this Friday, which is Veterans Day, uh, the 11th, and then closed on the, the 24th and 25th of this month uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday, the 23rd and the 26th over Christmas, and uh, the 2nd for New Year's. But just need a motion to establish those dates and closing times. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. By way of discussion item, I just wanted to bring the board up to date real quick with uh, our progress on our OpenGov uh, platform. If the board remembers, OpenGov is a software that we purchased uh, in a platform program to be able to or comprehensively display some of the some of the township's financial data, uh, especially doing this on a web-based method. Uh, we purchased this, uh, I think it was back over the summer months, and we've been working on it. And as we head into this year's budget, we've been working to try to really look at how we can we can blend these two programs. One of the difficulties that we have in the township, one of the most difficult things, is in, in presenting our financial data. It's that many of our operational expenses and our departmental expenses will flow over several different funds. And each of those funds have different things that they can and can't do. And so I think to the public, sometimes that can always be very, very confusing. And it can be very, very frustrating for us as staff to be able to present that accurately because there's so many sort of asterisks with every explanation, especially when you're trying to compare what happened from year to year from either a revenue or an expense standpoint, there can be great variances uh, as a result of sometimes the way these funds work and the way monies come in. And so our challenge has been sort of taking, you know, what we can't change, which is the way township finance works and the structure of these funds, but also finding a way where we can simplify 
uh, and present that data so it's easy to understand and it's representative of what's actually happening each year. And that's been a bigger challenge <laughs> than, than we thought, but we're, we're getting very, very close to uh, being able to do that and we're hopeful that by, uh, by March when we do our permanent appropriations and our new website is, is up and running, we'll have that data uh, there, but it's uh, it sounds it sounds easier than it really is, and again, the, the the whole point is really to be able to have fair and accurate comparisons from year to year. That's where the data really begins to to make some sense to the public. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot about the open checkbook, and, and we've had discussions about that. And the difficulty in doing that is sometimes you can present that information; it can be very misleading. Uh, both favorably and unfavorably, but it, it, it doesn't really show the true picture. So we're trying to blend those things together. Uh, you know, the UAN system that we use, which is our accounting network, that's not going to change. That presents the information in an accounting format. What we're trying to present it is in for the public and, and ultimately for the board and ultimately for our staff is something that, that can be more useful from a policy uh, decision standpoint and be able to look at those trends. So. Uh, long way of saying we're working on it. There's a few wrinkles we still have to work out. We're also working with OpenGov on some of the things that uh, uh, I'm surprised that some of the capabilities that it lacks for what we want to do, and we're working with them to try to see if they can if they can do some some customized things for us to be able to do it. Um, so that's kind of where we are. But I just want to let the board know that you know we we have been spending a lot of time on that. And it's going to be, in, in this year's, I think, the way we present this year's appropriations and budget to the board, there'll be a few tweaks in anticipation of how that's going to be reported uh, for OpenGov. So uh, we are working in that direction. Mike, do you have any idea when it might be finished that we could put numbers out on this website? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping by March. March. I mean, our website's not, you know, we're thinking, right, Kim, that our website is a March, April kind of a time frame. Right now, they bumped it to June, very, very beginning of June. That gives us about a month time to play around with it, make sure we get all the bugs taken out of it before it goes live. And Joe, we can, there's probably going to be an, an ability to put the, the OpenGov stuff on our website. We, we don't have to wait for the entire, you know, there's a separate page that we can do just for this. So uh, I'm hopeful that when we do our permanent appropriations, it'll be available. Because what we want to really do, I mean, we won't have, the, the data, as I said, is going to be sort of yearly totals, and so you've got to finish 2016 anyway uh, before you're going to put that out. Put and, out. and we wouldn't have year-end available until probably February, and then you'd want to put the appropriations when the permanent appropriations are done. So it's going to be in that, that early, early part of the year we should have the data. Well, I think that's I think that's smart. that was always sort of our time frame, but yeah, it's a, it's important that we when we do put this out to the public that we don't mislead people, and if we can put it out in a way that it's understandable, then the public can see what we're doing. I mean, it's a good we're we're telling a good story, uh, and um, we want to get that across to the to the public. Yeah, the key is really being able to do it in a way so that once we do it, it's the right way, so that every year. It's the, it's the right foundation, that we're not changing how we're presenting it in each year because it makes the comparisons virtually useless. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the thing I think is, is also critical is that we have always been transparent, and this is another uh, step in being as transparent and pro probably even better, so that the average person, when they go online, they can understand some of what the data or the story that the data is telling. And then if there are any questions, they can always contact uh, any of us, the staff, and they can go through it again as well and explain it. So uh, I, I like that process that we're moving forward in. We're getting there. It's been a very, very tedious, <laughs> tedious process, but we're getting there. Uh, next thing I have is just an update on the Brentwood Park situation. As the board's aware, that, that park has been under construction due to a, uh, a new sewer line that MSD has been doing, uh, which I believe that project is up to date. And Mike, I would ask you if you would uh, bring us up to date on what's happening on that project. Yes. The park. Yeah, within the last few weeks, Bracken Construction, who's a contractor that MSD hired to do the sewer project, has completed all work. Um, I'm happy to report that the grass is starting to grow and all the hazards that were preventing residents from visiting the park have been eliminated. Um, it would be my recommendation that we can open it and it's safe enough for visitors at this time. Do you want a motion? 
not sure if we ever had a motion to I don't think we probably it, never shut it. it. Yeah, you know, I, think I don't think Laura Shagan no. Just you just that's good, Mike. That's great. We'll announce, we'll announce it. Yeah. I think the greatest yeah. action is being able to see what it looks like now. So if you're coming down or up Compton Road and then you happen to circle around down Dale and you can <laughs> almost see all the way through there. You can see individuals' backyards at this point, you know, five, ten years from now, I'm sure there's gonna be some overgrowth, but finally it's finished and it looks fantastic. Yes, it does. It looks a lot better. Yes, it yes. does. Yeah. Next thing I have is the personnel update and just two two items uh, personnel-wise in the fire department. I did accept, accept the resignation of Zachary Flick. That was a part-time paramedic firefighter. His resignation date is effective October the 10th, 2016. And we did add a new bartender for our senior community center. That is Shirley Lindsley and her effective date is October the 15th of 2016. And Kim, I would ask you to bring the board up to date on what's going on with community events and programs. Thank you. Um, before I let you know about the community events that are coming up, I just want to mention that Waycross changed the television stations that um, our trustee meetings are aired actually starting tonight. Um, we did just get notice of this today, but um, we're going to be on Time Warner Channel 23, and for Phi Optics, um, they've changed that to Channel 853. Um, as far as community events going on, um, this Friday and Saturday, Arts Connect has their big art show down at Centennial Barn. Friday evening is from 7 to 10. We have 63 local artists that are submitting artwork into this show. We also have an exhibit um, with Charlie, Edie, and Brett Harper. We're going to have a wine tasting, live band. Um, we've got an auction, a raffle. It should be a really good time. Um, and then Saturday, that gallery is going to be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, for viewing only. Um, and then to wrap up the year on December the 3rd, we're going to have our annual Winterfest event. And then on December the 4th, the Cincinnati Civic Orchestra will be bringing their holiday concert to the Grove Banquet Hall. Thanks, Kim. Um, I know the board has copies of the departmental activity reports, so unless there's any questions, um, that's all I have on that. But I do, Joe, I would note that I would uh, like to request at the end of our uh, regular meeting an executive session uh, for the purposes of the board to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Hancamp. Next, moving on with the agenda, <clears throat> we are to resolution number 102-2016, which is a supplemental appropriation within the general fund. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Harlow? <laughs> Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 103-2016, authorizing the sale by internet auction of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit for use property in the service department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Harlow? Aye. Resolution carries. <clears throat> Next we have resolution number 104, 2016 authorizing the sale by internet auction of vehicles forfeited to Springfield Township pursuant to section 2981.05 of the Ohio Revised Code, which are no longer needed for public use, are obsolete, or unfit for use in the Drug Abuse Reduction Task Force of the Police Department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 105, 2016, authorizing the private sale of unneeded and unfit for use property in the Drug Abuse Reduction Task Force Department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Hanelaw? Aye. Resolution carries. Finally, we have resolution number 106, 2016, authorizing the sale by auction of junk vehicles which were titled to the township 
pursuant to sections 4513.61 and 4513.62 of the Ohio Revised Code, which are no longer needed for public use, are obsolete or unfit for use in any township department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolo? Aye. Resolution carries. Okay. Do we have any old business before the board this evening? I have none. I do not. Any new business? I have none. I do not. Moving on to citizens' participation. Is there anyone here that would like to address the board this evening? If there is, we would ask that you come up to the, step up to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, my name is Stacy Preston. And my address? Yeah. Did you say? Oh, I live at 6058 Oakwood Avenue, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. What, um, what, I, I, sorry, we couldn't get that. 6058 Oakwood Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45224. Okay. 6058 Oakwood, right? Yes. Okay. Got it. You want to see it? I got it written down. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm soft-spoken anyway. I'm a student from UC. I'm working on a group project um, with my other classmates could not make it, um, but we are with uh, Keep Order Wild. Uh, I'm working on that project. We would like to keep Order Nursery and Park and to stop any development. But there's no need for any more development and we'll kill some of the local habitat and plant and tree life. Some of the plants that are given to the Crown Conservatory, in my knowledge, the nursery has programs for special needs students as well. There are also a possible Charlie Harbor Museum that's to be put on the property if there is no development. So keep order wild. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board this evening? Kim and Mike, thanks for engaging us about the uh, possibility of this uh, Harbor Museum. We finally have something in common because I think it's a great idea and I think that Keep Order can be a real proponent for at least helping to make this happen, if not financially, at least in terms of informing the community. So uh, I hope that we'll stay in contact on this and I, the potential is, uh, is tremendous. So let's uh, keep talking. All righty. Thank you. Uh, Dave Hughes, 853 Denier. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Dave, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Bill Davidson. I live on 1037 Eastgate Drive in Finneytown. Um, a couple of my boys had questions about litter. We see a lot of litter on the streets, uh, back in their streets, you know, glass on the roads here and there. Um, I myself take a bus every day, half mile walk down Galbraith Road. I, I pick up litter on a pretty regular basis. Some of my neighbors do as well, so it's, it's a problem. It's noticeable. Um, just wondering if there were any projects, any plans. Um, what does the township do about it? I see street sweepers every once in a while, but not, not really very often. I'm usually at work not looking out my window for street sweepers, though, so I don't know. Well, Bill, I can tell you litter is a problem. I used to live on, used to live on Galbraith Road, and there would be plenty of it. And, and uh, with a business on Winton Road, you know, we, we experience it all the time. Um, the township, we've had, we've put uh, trash barrels in places where it seemed like it's been a you know, persistent problem, and that has helped some. Uh, Mike, I know we we do that. Um, we don't have probably a specific litter program, but uh, we do have. Um, uh, I know Kim. Every year we have the Great American Cleanup. Which when does that take place? Um, well, this year we opted to work with resident teams uh, to do different litter pickup projects and we've had different community groups such as the scouts that have come to us 
um, to organize individual cleanups within specific neighborhoods. Um, we had a summer camp program this year that was all teaching kids, um, you know, they actually created an entire campaign on Don't Litter in My Community, and they raised $200 to purchase, I believe we have 20 litter sticks, then community teams can check those litter sticks out, and we record all of that, and that goes towards the Township's Recycling Incentive um, Program. Okay. Judges, and if you're... A couple of things I would mention is the Township does actually, I mean, as far as active things that we do, um, the Township Service Department does actively pick up litter not only in our parks and throughout our right-of-ways, but we actively do that along Winton Road, which is our primary business corridor. And then we will engage with the, uh, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department through the corrections. You know, that occasionally you'll see the prisoners out on Cross County. Um, I mean, I would agree with you. I mean, one of the biggest problems that we have is it's just not a big, there's not a big, I guess, public relations um, kind of campaign that probably when, when I was a kid. I mean, you heard about it all the time, and you see what people dump out of their car. Unfortunately, with Cross County Highway, you have a lot of rumpke trucks going up and down there, so they're blowing out of the back and a lot of traffic. And there's a lot of traffic on Winton Road, and it's just what cars generate, what people throw out, and then you, know, you get to certain times of the year with the winds. It is a definite problem, but uh, I know we try to maintain it. Uh, Mike, how often do your, your crew is out there at least weekly? Yeah, we're out once a week. They police all the parks, all the main gateway areas. They try to get to as many locations as they possibly can. Just so you know, Bill, it's an ongoing. I had an office on Winton Road for many years, and I could go out there in the morning and pick it up, and by the time I left at the end of the day, there was some more dropped as people walk up and down Winton Road, they'll just throw it on the ground. Unfortunately, yeah. people throw things out of cars and just drop it instead of taking it with them and throwing it away. And we have several neighborhoods that have cleanup days, and they will go through the community and have uh, some of the neighborhoods, would, neighbors would just go in, pick up stuff, and. Uh, they would use, we would provide for them if they were going to have a massive neighborhood cleanup uh, products like gloves and et cetera to pick that up. So it's not just here in Finneytown, it's all over the township, which, which I think is very good on their part as well. Chris, did you have something? No. So we have a question. question. Well, you're one of your, yes, one of your Cub Scouts here looks like he has a question or wants oh, to yeah. say something. But I was going to say, Kim, is it possible if, if their Cub Scout pack wanted to participate in a litter cleanup, would there be opportunities for that? Absolutely. I believe that they even have a badge for the boys coming to the project as well. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I know we've, we've done some in the past, other scout groups I've been involved with and so forth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yes, sir. Would you like to ask a question? Well, you, I imagine that is uh, bio, biodegradable. I look at sheep and I ask, is that all of the criminal code for littering? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, albeit a, a great idea. I've, I've heard of that before, actually. But uh, Somebody could step on and slip or fall. I mean, it is wet. <laughs> throw it in your own yard, it's not a problem. Yeah, throw yeah. it in your backyard, it's not a problem. It's a good question, though. Yeah. Thank you. you. Properly composted it is a good way to do it. Well, thank you very much. Is there anyone else that has any uh, questions or comments for the board this evening? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Maggie Laird, 7045 Greenfield, 224. Um, I've spoken with the police um, a few times in the past six months or so. Um, I think they're starting to get to know me. We have a traffic problem in my neighborhood. Um, I live in the neighborhood across from Whitaker School, and um, my youngest rides the bus every day. And it is a daily event for me to see um, stop sign runners not even slowing down, um, going way above the speed limit. Um, there's even regulars, they do it every day, and every day I wave so they know that I see them. Um, and I have had some good conversations with the police department lately, and I know that they're trying their best to, um, to look into that. 
um, it, what blows me away about it is this is happening when there are kids walking to school and in part of my neighborhood there are no sidewalks so the kids are walking on the street um, to get to school sometimes they walk in the grass because a lot of the neighbors are very kind about that but if they have like my son Grady has a drum kit that he has to take to school twice a week. It's on wheels, so he, he can't take that through the grass. So it's just a, a problem that just continues to go on. Right now we do have a speed monitor on um, Springbrook. Yeah. And I, I noticed it wasn't flashing the other day. I don't know if it's not flashing because I'm not speeding or if it's not flashing because it doesn't work. I'm not sure which one. Um, but it's just a problem that just... I've been there for 12 years. It just goes on and on and on. And I talk to my neighbors, and it's everywhere. It's by Brent. It's by the high school. Um, you know, just going twice the speed limit, going right through signs. And every once in a while, it's a neighbor. And I will delicately talk to them about that. You know, look, I saw you today. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's a concern. It's, it's a concern that I know that it's hard to address because you can't make everybody follow the speed limit, but at the same time, I'm afraid something's bad, but something bad is gonna happen for it to really get exceptional attention. So that's my concern. All right, well, we appreciate that. We, it, speeding is a problem in the neighborhoods. I mean, you certainly aren't the first person that has you know, brought that to our attention. I know, Chief, you've tried to address problems in, you know, down in the Greenfield area and really, you know, all over. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with the particular complaint you're talking about. Yes, the, the, um, the sign is on Springbrook. It's been there for, for about two weeks, I want to say. I was down there myself. It is working. Um, okay. If it doesn't flash, that means you're doing good. Okay. We have, <laughs> we have written a number of tickets down there, okay. and your statement about once in a while it's a resident I'm afraid to tell you about 95% of the time it's a mm. resident. Okay. Um, so, you know, we'll continue to, to you know, enforce, uh, you know, the speed and the stop signs there because obviously that's a, a priority of ours as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board this evening? Okay. It appears that there is not. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, this portion of the meeting and to go into executive session for the purpose of uh, discussing the uh, acquisition of um, real estate for a public purpose. Purchase of property for public purpose. So moved. Yeah. Second it. Mr. Vernon? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Motion carries. All right, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We appreciate you coming out on a Monday. Uh, we thought we'd move our meeting so that we could uh, have everybody could have their opportunity to get to the polls tomorrow. Thank you.